Uh, I just happened to catch this thing this morning while I was going over my feeds. Uh -huh. um, it is a, a <laughs> typical, not at all clickbaity <laughs> headline <laughs> by Salon. <laughs> yeah, They're, they never do that sort of thing. Um, uh, and, and the headline is, New Atheism's Fatal Arrogance, the mm. Glaring Intellectual Laziness of Bill Maher and Richard Dawkins. Mm. Now, I read a headline like this, and I'm like, okay, sometimes Bill Maher and, and or Richard Dawkins may be intellectually lazy. I don't take everything they say as gospel. Let's see what this guy has to offer. Mm. And so I read it, and I was like, this guy has nothing at all to offer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll just read the beginning of it. Yeah. Uh, for starters, he says, Atheism has a storied history in the West. From the irreverent Voltaire to the iconic Nietzsche, the godless have always had a voice. But the new atheists are different. Religion, they argue, isn't just wrong, it's positively corrosive. Uh -oh. If you've heard people like Bill Maher or Lawrence Krauss speak in recent years, you're familiar with this approach. Now, I'll just pause for a minute and ask, uh, religion, corrosive or not corrosive? Uh, pretty corrosive. Yeah, well, yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, fine so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, new atheism. By the way, I have never really heard anybody seriously say new atheism except people are, who are complaining about it. Yeah, when, it's one of those where the instant the, that... It, it, it's, it's one of those terms like social justice warrior. The minute yeah. you hear someone say it, you know that they're about to pretty much open up with both barrels Gripe and about air it. a bunch of whatever yeah. grievances that it, they It's have. like, I never considered atheism all that new. I was, you yeah. know, I, w I grew up as an atheist in the 70s, and, you know, Matt's a big fan of Robert Ingersoll, who mm -hmm. was, you know, quite the firebrand atheist like 100, 150 years ago, yeah. somewhere around Yeah, I mean, the there. only thing that's really new about the new atheism is that it has actually been able to reach an audience. It has not right. had to suppress itself or hide or, you know, uh, be limited to fringe, cr people that get to appear on the media as fringe crazies, as, you know, the media always like to, you know, portray Madeleine O'Hare as, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, it's and been mainstreamed a bit more. So he goes... It. <laughs> so he goes on to say, um, new atheism emerged as a, in 2004 as a kind of literary and social movement led by such luminaries as Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, and Christopher Hitchens. New, atheists, new atheism became part of the zeitgeist, a well-timed reaction against religious fundamentalism. Okay. I object to always being uh, uh, to it always being implied that Dawkins, Harris, and Hitchens are the leaders of the atheist movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they happen to be the ones who get on TV all the time. Uh, but there are a ton of uh, very intelligent, skeptical voices out there in the world, um, and. For, you, you, the idea that they are leaders of the movement is in some way, and it seems like an attempt to imply that they are, that they are kind of unassailable popes of the religion, yeah, which I have to of, remind people all the time, we don't have. Or at the very least, uh, sort of global ambassadors uh, of atheism who are you know, dictating a party line for the rest of us to follow. I can understand, well, actually I can't. I mean, it, it, yes, 10 years ago, they were among the very first prominent public figures uh, who were known for speaking publicly about atheism and for normalizing and popularizing atheism among the public at large. Right. But it's been a long, well, actually, yeah, it's been a long decade since then. What was it? And the God Delusion was 2006? Yeah. And we're in 2015. Something and in that there. time that there has been an evolution of a, whatever you want to call it, movement atheism or just the communi community of atheism at large, and there is no atheist community. There are atheist communities. Right. And um, it has since become a much more diverse landscape out there for atheism. Yeah, I agree. So, you know, so if, if in this day and age you're still limiting your understanding of the atheist perspective on anything to what is said by, you know, the same four dudes, you, you haven't really grown with the movement, I don't think. Right. And, and by bringing this up, this is not in itself a knock on, Rich, on uh, Richard no, Dawkins no, or no. Sam Harris or Bill Maher. 
uh, all of whom have said many, many things I agreed with and mm -hmm. cheered for. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, to throw out some examples, I've seen Richard Dawkins get in some debates where I was like, well, that was a weak-ass debate performance. <laughs> it doesn't mean uh, that, I mean, he is neither an atheist pope nor an atheist great Satan, despite what some people seem to want to imply every mm -hmm. time one of those guys gets criticized. Yeah. They are both people who say some good things and some dumb things. Because they're people. Like all of us. That's how people are. And, for, and if we're atheists and we're skeptics, we understand that we're fallible people. All, right. all of us, even the people we admire. But let's face this author's charge that they are intellectually lazy and see what he decides to go for. Let us do this, <laughs> Russell. Um, there's something missing in their critiques, he says, something fundamental. For all their eloquence, their arguments are often banal. Uh, excuse me, I, I skipped, uh, no, this is fine. Uh, regrettably, they've shown little interest in understanding the religious compulsion. They talk incessantly about the untruth of religion because they assume truth is what matters to most people, uh, religious people. Mm -hmm. And perhaps it does for many, but certainly not all, at least not in the conventional sense of the term. Religious convictions in many cases are held not because they're true, but because they're meaningful, because they're personally transformative. And new atheists are blind to this brand of belief. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> oh, you're, you're passing it over to me now with that one. Wow, well, I'm a, doing all the reading. It's a target-rich environment. Where do you start? Yeah. Um, <laughs> first off, I, it's, it may not be strictly untrue that uh, for some believers uh, it is about the emotional uh, experience, the transformative aspects uh, of religious belief, that feeling of uh, allowing yourself to, to feel that, uh, to believe that you're being loved by some sort of uh, you know, divine uh, fatherly figure looking down upon you and this makes you know, the, the, the big scary game of life a little less scary to play, as it mm -hmm. were. All um, things, all roles that religion absolutely does fill for yeah, a lot of people. Uh, but I would say that even among <clears throat> the believers uh, who receive, uh, who practice and, and receive and treat their religious belief in that fashion, I still think that I don't think anyone of them would tell you, no, I don't care whether it's true or not, it just makes me feel happy and fuzzy. Um, they do think that they have tied into a, um, a transcendent truth of some sort. Yeah, you, uh, you even you if and they... I have talked to many, many religious people over the years, uh -huh. and I cannot think of almost any people at all that I've talked to who would just not say, my belief in God is true. Yeah, yeah, some of them might be on the boundary of not be, you know, of not being a theist anymore, where they mm -hmm. might say something like, you know, oh, you know, I want to hold on to these beliefs, but I'm just not comfortable because the more I look into it, I mean, those are people who are about to come to become atheists. Yeah. <laughs> those aren't your typical religious person. Your typical religious person who calls in says there's a God. Yeah. That's a true thing for them. Yes. And even when you hear, I mean, even when you're arguing with, with unsophisticated believers, um, you know, online or something like that, even mm -hmm. those folks will uh, immediately come at you with these apologetics that, again, they're receiving from whatever websites or, or, or um, ministers they're listening to that make truth claims, right? right. So they, they all try, want they all try to get for it. They're picking up on the pseudoscience of guys like Ken Ham. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know Hugh Ross and people like that, and they always say, "Well, what about the fine tuning of the universe?" And so they do think that they are that not only is there truth to it, uh, but increasingly the apologetics line is yes, and there's even and science validates the Bible, and so they want to try to claim some of that validity. So I, 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 I've never in good Lord, when did I get on this show first time? Ninety <laughs> nine. And I've never once uh, spoken to a theist who says, "Yeah, who cares? That's true. It makes mm -hmm. me feel good." And, you know, that's, that's all I like. Here, have a, you know, have a marshmallow yeah. with me. You know, now, the interesting hug. thing is, no. it turns out next that the author of this piece is maybe an atheist, or maybe he matches the definition of atheist, but wouldn't subscribe to that label, one of those. <laughs> But he says, uh, it's perfectly rational to reject faith as a matter of principle. Many people, myself included, find no practical advantage in believing things without evidence. 
but you got that? yes. In the next sentence, <laughs> you starts. know it starts with a but. Yes, which I'm an atheist, but he's one of beginning a sentence with a with a conjunction, which yeah. you're not supposed to do, but you know. But even so, <laughs> isn't this you know again back in back in 06, uh, didn't didn't Dawkins specifically talk about these guys in his in his book? Uh, I believe the I'm did. an atheist, but <laughs> atheists. Um, but go on with what he. Uh, says, but anyways. what about those who do? Is a, if a belief is held because of its effect and not its truth content, why should its falsity matter to the believer? Of course, most religious people consider their beliefs true in some sense, but that's to be expected. The consolation derived from a belief is greater if its illusory origins are concealed. The point is that such beliefs aren't held because they're true as such. They're accepted on faith because they're meaningful. Mm, no, I think he misses it. <laughs> Go I find this attitude way, way more condescending than we ever would be. <laughs> I mean, at least we take believers seriously when yeah. they tell us that they believe a thing. Mm -hmm. We may say, you believe that for bad reasons, let's explore those reasons, you know, let's discuss whether your beliefs are well-founded. But I would never for a moment say, hey, this guy is saying that he believes in, uh, in God, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really he's just saying that to make himself feel good. Yeah. I mean... What no, a jerk. <laughs> well, I, the more this writer, you know, accuses the new atheists of not understanding the thought processes of the believer, he just reveals with everything he writes that he's the guy who actually doesn't understand those things. Because this very sentence right here, the point is that such beliefs aren't held because they're true as such, semicolon. They are accepted on faith because they're meaningful. No, they're accepted on faith because believers have been taught to think that faith is a valid form of cognition, every bit as valid as evidence-based knowledge if not more so because you are receiving it from on high. Yeah. They see faith as a path to truth, not faith as a way of circumventing truth just so you, that you can believe something anyway. That may be what faith actually is, but that is not how the faithful see faith. Right. Thank you, Russell, for uh, that validation. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good person, Martin. <laughs> um, uh, if I, can, if I am gonna throw this guy a bit of a bone here, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the things that we do here are from people who are uncomfortable with uh, full-on embracing atheism because they feel like religion is, is maybe offering something like meaning and purpose in their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that happens, for sure, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, uh, he is not entirely incorrect that uh, it's a good idea for atheists to work towards, uh, you know, filling, filling the void that people uh, might feel yeah. in their lives by not thinking, well, I'm going to live forever, I'm going to see my loved ones again, and so forth. Well, um, where, where he's incorrect is in thinking that atheists don't recognize those aspects of the religious experience. Right. Um, there are maybe some atheists who do not, but again, atheists are not a hive mind, right? Uh, I found that, um, okay, for example, there are atheists who are lifelong atheists, and there are mm -hmm. atheists who have come to atheism after growing up in a religious upbringing right. uh, from church attendance. Um, and, uh, you know, recently there's been this phenomenon among, you know, certain atheist groups, uh, you know, folks doing these Sunday assemblies or, yeah, sure. you know. Which and, is fine. And for the most part, I found that, you know, present company accepted, if the lifelong atheists <laughs> are the ones who are kind of sneering and, you know, being very derisive towards, you know, the, these, uh, these little meetings. Uh, maybe. Um, but where, but it's the, well, no, there's a lot of derision. I mean, I, read, I don't know the background of everybody who criticizes mm -hmm. them, but I, you know, my suspicion is that if you have never grown up in the church environment and with the sense of community that that brings, uh, then you are probably less inclined to understand perhaps what it is that people who did grow up in that environment <coughs> got out of it. Mm -hmm. So, but if you're, if you're a new atheist who came to atheism from Christianity and from the church life, you're kind of used to having that little gang of folks, right. you know, that little sense of whether it's family or just friendship or community or what have you that you could plug into every, you, you will miss that, you know, that human kind of interaction thing. And right. so those are the folks yeah. that the Sunday assemblies are geared towards. But I mean, and, even lifelong atheists mm -hmm. need social groups to hang around yeah. with. 
Uh, and I have personally found, I mean, you know, yeah. people often turn up their nose at the idea that you can, yeah. that you can have social groups based on the idea that there is no God. Ha yeah. ah, what do you do? Just say, you know, there's still no God all day? Yeah. Um, <laughs> God. But, uh, you know, I have personally found that the people I've chosen to surround myself with mm -hmm. uh, in identifying themselves as atheists, uh, to a large extent, have set themselves, uh, you know, this might sound a little snobby, but put themselves in sort of a countercultural position mm -hmm. uh, where uh, they, they reject a lot of the things that people uh, receive like moral authority by fiat, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, or something like that, or or have philosophical discussions about what it all means. And I do find actually that people who have sort of a reality-based, science-based view of life, you know, mm -hmm. and and talk about skepticism and stuff like that, tend to have a lot in common with me and are worth uh, being in my social circle on that basis alone. Right. Now, there are some serious creeps in the atheist movement. <laughs> As you'll, also. you'll find anywhere, yeah. Um, but it's not like there aren't those in churches, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you tend to find them pretty, pretty hard in, in churches yeah. as well. But yeah, I, I would say that if anything, like these, these Sunday assemblies uh, mm -hmm. are, are, are nothing more than a, an affirmation of Hitchens' challenge to theists, which is, can you name for me a virtue that is exclusive to religion, that no secular person can experience for secular reasons. You know, so it, it, whether it's a moral virtue or any, any, anything that is, that, that is uniquely good about the religious life that cannot also be appreciated in, in a secular context. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I wasn't around, we weren't around uh, for like the very, very first days of the ACA. Mm -hmm. um, but, but even, but back then it was still thought, you know, it was odd to have maybe like an atheist group or something like that. And I've heard tell from the folks who were around in those days that the very initial uh, meetings at the, the bagel shop meetups on Sunday morning um, were just a very small kind of timid group of folks who were kind of looking over their shoulder with one eye, you know, in case, uh, you know, Christian commandos burst in the door with Uzis or something. <laughs> um, but, they never did. Yeah. By the way, yeah, but you know it, it, what we had grew into this social group, and then it grew into this media outrage, and the, yeah, and then it ha has now grown into what it is today. And so, yeah. So, okay, so there's quite a lot to be said for it. Well, there's but, a lot more to this article. Yeah, but but uh, uh, I'm ready for calls. I don't yeah, know I, I am too. Anyway, I think uh, you've got the general message. We we disapprove of this man's yes claims. <laughs> we